Welcome to the last video for Chapter 3. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about how neurons work together to communicate, and also what happens when those communications go awry. So, now that we've discussed in depth how one neuron communicates with another, we pull back a little bit to look at a slightly bigger picture. Neurons will link up into a neural circuit in order to perform tasks or functions. The simplest neural circuit that is encountered in the nervous system is called a neural chain. So this is a simple series of neurons that connect um, linearly from end to end. And a really good example of this is the knee-jerk reflex. Um, so this is something that you probably have been subjected to at the doctor's office as well. Um, the circuit consists of sensory neurons, a motor neuron, and a single synapse where the sensory neuron communicates to the motor neuron. So it's a very, very simple uh, reflex. What happens is the, um, well here, I'll go to the next slide and show you. So as you can see here, when the patellar tendon is contacted, it activates the muscle stretch receptors, and we'll talk about the stretch receptors later, um, and the quadricep muscle. And this sensory neuron then sends the information to the spinal cord, at which point it synapses with a motor neuron. This causes the motor neuron to fire, which then contacts the muscle fiber, leading the leg to jump. So, the knee jerk reflex is extremely fast, only takes about 40 milliseconds from beginning to end, and the twitch speed is due to several factors. One, these are axons that are myelinated and are quite large because they're in the leg. Uh, two, the sensory cell synapses directly onto the motor neuron, and um, three, it uses fast ionotropic synapses. So it has pretty much everything going for it as far as speed. Um, so this is just a simple, um, about the simplest neural chain you can have. The book also describes the visual system um, as another circuit, though frankly it's probably oversimplifying it a bit too much, but it's an ideal system to discuss convergence and divergence. So there are roughly a hundred million receptor cells in the eye, and they concentrate down to approximately one million ganglion cells. This process in which neural connections from many cells send signals to a single cell is called convergence. The opposite project is divergence. In this case, the one million ganglion cells ends up influencing billions of cortical neurons. Um, this process, where the one cell sends a signal to many other cells, is called divergence. So, pretty simple, but it, you see this throughout the neural, or nervous system, so it's important to discuss. So, we have also discussed, or as we have discussed, a significant portion of neural transmission is through electrical impulses. And these impulses are actually large enough that they can be detected on the scalp. So this, for this reason, technology such as EEG has been used in order to measure brain activity in different parts of the brain. As we discussed um, when we talked about imaging, the advantage of EEG is it has very good temporal resolution. So what that means is it's very fast. As soon as the activity happens, we know about it. So that's temporal resolution. It's how quickly we're able to identify activities t taking place and how close it is between when the activity happens and when we're able to detect it. So very good temporal resolution. However, it does not have very good spatial resolution, meaning that we're not able to tell exactly where the activity is coming from. For this reason, we often take measurements from many places on a person's head to try to be able to somewhat localize the activity. Um, although our EEG is outdated for a lot of different types of research, it's still valuable in many areas. For instance, in my area of sleep, um, it's actually part of the gold standard for determining uh, what is the level of sleep a person's in based upon brain waves and some other information um, that we can get from EEG. So it's very important in certain areas like sleep. It's also very important for diagnosing and understanding seizure disorders as well as, well as hearing disorders in small children or young children, not just small ones.
So, in a normal brain, activity tends to be desynchronized across regions. Um, however, in epilepsy, um, you have seizures where you have this um, this activity synchronizing throughout the brain, or either in parts of the brain or throughout the brain. We'll talk about the different types. So epilepsy is a brain disorder that's marked by sudden major changes in the electrophysiological state of the brain, um, and that change is, is called a seizure. And again, all a seizure is is a synchronization of electrical activity in the brain. Um, so because of this, there are certain EEG um, signatures that we look for. And these brainwave patterns that we see during seizures are described as epileptiform activity. So I'm not sure how many of you have seen a seizure or been exposed to one. So I have a video that's actually made by someone who suffers from seizures, kind of describing what it's like to have a seizure. Um, it's a little graphic. People in the past have been fine viewing it, but if you want to skip it, that's okay. But I think it'll be helpful for kind of understanding what it's what it's like to go through this and to give you a better understanding of what a seizure looks like. Okay, bud? Just relax, okay? There you go, okay? Calm down. All right, there you Calm go, down, okay, man. Nate? There you Calm go, down. okay? Stay right here, okay, bud? We're right here with you, okay? Just relax. Just relax. We're here to help you, all right? Let me get respirations on him. You'll be all right, okay? Stay calm, okay? We're here to help, all right? Just relax for us, okay? You just had a seizure, all right, Nate? We're going to get some oxygen on you, all right, bud? Are uh, we going to 15 liters? Yep. Okay, Nate, I'm going to get some oxygen on you, okay, bud? It's going to help you breathe a little bit. Just like that. Just relax, okay? All right. Ready to go? Yeah. Down here. Ready? Yep. One, two. Go right there. It's okay, man. We're going to get to the end, like, okay, Nate? Almost over, man. Okay, a little pump, right? We're going to have to curve it. Just relax. Don't look straight up at me, okay? Alright, everything looks good, alright? You're doing a good job. Just relax, okay? Eyes right here, okay? I'm right here with you. Doing good, Nate. Just relax. 
It's not spaghetti. Just take it easy. I'm gonna put this mask back on you, okay? Calm down, Nate. Just relax, bud, okay? Just relax. Just relax, Nate. Hey, relax. Come on, hey, come on. Relax. Hey, hey, relax. hey. Just hey. calm down, Stay all right? Down, come on. Calm down, okay? Hey, just relax. Hey, 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 just hey, hey, just hey, 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 just relax, Nate. Nate, hey, relax. Take it easy, okay? We're here to help you, all right? Hold that arm and make sure that Ivy doesn't come out. Just relax, buddy, okay? Just relax. Take it easy, okay? Take it easy. Look at me. Look at me right now. Take it easy. Calm down, okay? We're here to help you. Calm down. Just relax, buddy. Just relax, okay? Calm down. Calm down, Nate. Calm down. Just relax, Nate. Just relax, okay? Just relax. Look at me. Calm down. I'm here to help you, okay? Just relax, bud. Just relax. It's okay, man. Come on. Stay with us here. We're gonna pull something. Just relax, all right, bud? Stay down. Stay down. Just relax. Huh? Huh? What's that, Nate? <laughs> Is this for doing it out of my arms? Nate, everything's all right, okay? It's in there for okay. a reason. It needs to stay in there, all right, bud? I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it in there, okay? I'm gonna get this mask back on you. So hopefully that's helpful to kind of give a better idea of what it's like to experience a seizure and what it's like to see one and very, very scary, but you know, it's, while there are certainly risks, you don't want to have seizures. Also, you know, the greatest danger is often the person falling and hurting themselves once um, they do have that loss of consciousness. but. You can also see how to handle it where you just, you know, you call 911, you get someone there um, in order to transport them to the hospital to take care of it further. So, a couple different types of seizures. Uh, grand mal seizures are more um, now more commonly known as tonic-clonic seizures, and these are seizures that involve the entire brain. Um, there are two main phases of the seizure. There's a tonic and a clonic phase, hence the name. During the tonic phase, uh, the person quickly loses consciousness. You have the skeletal muscles tense, which will often lead to the person falling if they're standing, or even possibly sitting, you know, they may fall. Um, this is the shortest phase of the seizure, and it lasts only a couple seconds. So you get to see that at the very end with him going into that tonic phase of it. 
During the clonic phase, um, the person's muscles will start to con um, contract and relax rapidly, which is the convulsion. So you saw that after he kind of fell and was sitting, that's when he started to have the convulsions. And these can range from twitching to a violent shaking. And then usually sleep follows the seizure. Um, and then you also have confusion and amnesia that will persist for minutes to hours after the seizure. And I like the video I showed you because it really demonstrates that well. It shows the, um, the confusion that is very typical following a seizure. And also, you know, what it was like once he came to the realization of what happened. There are also petite mal seizures. So this is where the brain waves sync up, but for a shorter period of time, um, usually about 5 to 15 seconds. And it can actually happen several times a day. So they differ from grand mal seizures in several ways. One is that there isn't really any unusual muscle activity, um, except that the person may stop and stare for a little bit. Um, also, the events during the seizure are not remembered. Um, but one difference is after the petite mal, the person's conscious, they're lucid, they don't remember the time during the seizure, but everything before and after they're aware of. So you don't have that confusion that you'd see with a grand mal seizure. Uh, another type of seizures to talk about are complex partial seizures. These are a bit different because they don't involve the whole brain, and thus they can provide or produce a wide variety of symptoms depending on where the seizure occurs. Um, so, with that, that's kind of the wild card since it just happens, you know, the effects you see depend on where in the brain the seizure is taking place. Auras. Auras are unusual sensations that may precede a seizure. Um, not all people have auras, but you know you can have auras. So these, the unusual um, sensation differs from person to person. It can be a bright light. It can be an odd visual or auditory or even olf olfactory sensation. So it could be a smell. Um, that is predictive of the onset of a seizure. So this might be an aura, for instance. Um, not all individuals with epilepsy have auras, but for those that do, it may provide a few seconds or even minutes to prepare for a seizure, which will help avoid injury. Kindling is um, a breakthrough that a breakthrough finding rather that was um, found by McNamara in which he found that by repeatedly stimulating parts of the brain with sub-seizure electrical impulses, over time those areas essentially became more sensitive and more seizure prone. So it's thought that this may help um, explain how people may develop seizures and also how those seizures may change over time.